Hello there. Once again, it's Anton from Anton Obey. Thank you for stopping by the collection room today. We're looking at some She-Hulk comics. And this is She-Hulk from an era I have no concept of. Um, I know Sensational She-Hulk. I know Savage She-Hulk. Love the John Byrne stuff. And after that, don't really know much. Uh, I liked her when she was in the Fantastic Four, even though I don't even like the Fantastic Four. Um, that was peak She-Hulk. And these I picked up, uh, and uh, all my other She-Hulks got sold. These did not because they have stickers on them. These were 50 cents out of a quarter or a 50 cent bin, Comic City. They were they were just getting rid of these things. And I was like, well, the covers look pretty good. I don't know what this this mo new modern, more modern era of, of uh, Marvel's really about. I don't really care. Um, this is 2007, so I probably hadn't like bought a new Marvel comic for uh, six years at least at this point. So I don't know much about these. All I remember is that at some point uh, I heard that She-Hulk slept with the Juggernaut, and I was I, I was already like hanging on by a thread for Marvel comics. Um, and as soon as you start like focusing on who's banging who more than you do about uh, actual stories, villains, uh, things like that. I tend to not care at all, and so I did not. I also have uh, no concept of the new She-Hulk, what was it, TV series? Um, saw a couple clips, heard a couple things, and just decided to pass on it because I didn't really need uh, anybody else uh, lousing up my, uh, my adoration for the vintage She-Hulk, so. I did love the figure from that series, uh, which I do have. But I'm not watching it, and I'm not I'm not interested in She-Hulk probably in the modern era anymore. But I do look very fondly back on the sensational days because it was brilliantly done. She was breaking the fourth wall before Deadpool was even created, and just a really fun character in all kinds of ways. And I don't know if that carries on with these. I don't know if she's talking to the the audience. I don't know, and you know, I, I've just seen some other stuff where they've really, really, uh, I guess, wokeified this character to the point it's like, ah, eh, why? You know, I, I'm not interested. I'll, I'll pass on it. I'm kind of sick of all that shit. So, um, when it comes to these issues, it's really just a uh, hey. I had them and I couldn't sell them, but I want to see them. And I always bought them because the cover art looked really great. Like I'm gonna give it that cover art on these looks awesome. Interior art looks awesome. I don't know the vibe that it has, and I'm not getting a sense that She-Hulk is talking to us. So that kind of disappoints me because I feel like that was one of that character's great uh, elements was talking to us outside of the panels. It doesn't look like that's a thing that uh, happens in these and I call that a big strike on them. I do say like covers like this, this is why I bought it, was just really cool covers like that. Like that's a neat cover. I'm not sure how, what kind of art style that is. It's almost like you can tell it's still drawn but it's like digitalized somehow but it's not like AI yet so it's it's that weird in-between place that was pretty good stuff. What is this? Just a minute, Avenger. Lieutenant Stone, I need to ask you a few questions. Can you tell me who's president of the United States right now? Don't be silly, it's Gore. No, wait, I mean it's Bush. It's Bush, right? <laughs> this would have probably been around that one election that was like difficult. With the hanging chads and the the all the stupidity and the recounts and Al Gore ruling the country from his basement. Ugh, well, either way. I don't remember exactly what year that is. I would not have been fully paying attention to politics at the time, uh, which is probably great. I should probably uh, go back to that era. Mm-hmm. Beating up the wrecking ball. Yeah, 
I don't know how I feel about this era of Marvel. It's not as terrible as the modern era, but you can see it's on its way to something like unrecognizable to what it originally was. And that's probably, probably why I just don't really feel it. Sometimes the art, well, okay, like this, I say the art's pretty good like that. That's not good. And that isn't good. Some of this doesn't look too bad. Some of it does. I don't like the pumpkin pie haircut of that guy. Bioshock one. Uh, these were also pricey. $2.99. Slick pages. I had somebody comment one time and I saw the thing is like, when did, when did comics stop being good? And he said, as soon as they moved away from newsprint. And you know, I never really thought about that. And I thought, oh no, it just, it hit the modern era where everything turned to shit and everything got political and they started infusing everything with uh, ideologies and everything. But you know, that also really coincided with the, uh, the shift from newsprint to these glossy pages. See, newsprint pages would have been just regular pages and you would have like a glossy cover perhaps. And the books would have been about $1.99. And I was good with all that. And then it made the jump to the glossy finished pages. Uh, some stuff altered in their marketing to the way that it was, uh, oh, distributed bunch of distribution issues and that that coincides with the era where everything just seemed to go bad so I kind of thought about what that guy said and I was like you know maybe it did kind of just really really totally collapse when it went to to news when it, uh, when it left newsprint because I mean seriously readership changed uh, the price of the book started to skyrocket distribution alters all this stuff Maybe it was some sort of a, a coincidence in that. And I gotta say, some of the art in this looks really good, and I like the way the covers are done. I've already said that, but is it better than it was on newsprint? On paper stock? No, I'd rather have paper stock than all the digital coloring. I'd rather have paper stock any day. And I'd rather have, like, you know, a more primitive color system. As you can tell, this is all like digitally colored and it's just, it has some aspect of dynamic to it, but it also looks fairly washed. I know newspaper print tends to fade, but I'd rather a faded book than, than this. Cause I'm really not feeling this. The ultimate Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Is she Hulk even in this comic? I'm like not seeing anything. Like there she is, but for some reason the sun is washing her out to make her look not green. Which I don't know why you would do that color wise. It just seems like an odd decision. As many things were with this series. Which is probably why, you know, as, mu as expensive as these were, uh, the fact that they are 50 cents and I got them out of a bin probably, probably speaks a little bit to the reception of them. And the fact that sensational stuff and savage stuff is still bringing top tier dollar and it's pretty hard to get your hands on. Like it's, it's much more pricey. Uh, this, like I said, I love the character. I don't love the direction that it's moved, but isn't that that way with virtually every single comic book property ever? So, you know, maybe we're just meant to stop at a certain point and like this chunk is what we like. And then that, that next 10 to 15 year chunk, that's for the next generation of readers to enjoy. And, you know, maybe if you're like me, you just like eh, anything 2000 to, um, you know, 1975, 71, I'm into. I like the older stuff too, so maybe maybe it's not that way. Maybe they just all stopped being good in 2000. And maybe that dude was right. It is just about the print. Anyway, rambling. That's my story. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you later. Bye.